today I'm gonna make a simple no weld fire pit. Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and my cutter that cuts the Rocket King rocket stove sold me some scrap stainless 11 gauge, it's fairly thick, for a prototype of an outdoor fire pit as opposed to an indoor fire pit. I know you were right in that comment, weren't you? But before I take the grinder to the stainless, I'm gonna prototype the fire pit out of cardboard. I'm gonna start by cutting some pieces of cardboard to match the scrap that I have. Before I cut the full size, I'm gonna make it in miniature to work out the kinks. Initially, I was going to try a three-sided fire pit since that's the amount of metal that I have, but the angles were just gonna be too complex. And as my son pointed out, the cardboard flexes a little bit. The metal isn't gonna do that. So it took a few iterations, but here's what I ended up with. It's a four-sided fire pit with a 45 degree angle that notches together, no welding needed. It's made out of two of two each of two different types of pieces. One that notches in from the top and one that notches in from the bottom. And it goes together like this. So I've got a full size corner on each dimension or each direction to make sure this is stable on the ground. But because this is four sided, I only have enough metal for three sides. So I'm gonna head over to my local metal supermarket. Yeah, that's actually a thing. And pick up a piece of scrap. This is the drop room. They've got all kinds of different sheet and rod and stuff that's been cut off of other projects, but it's all priced lower because it's been cut off of something else, so it's not the standard size. But that means you can get a deal. In fact, it's all priced by the pound. But that also means they might not have what you're looking for in the drop room, but they'll have it here on site. Oh, look at that. I need some box. Ah, uh, here are the drops. Although the stainless at this weight, at 11 pounds and 0.45 ounces at $4.50 a pound. That's gonna be almost 50 bucks for that piece of metal. So I think I'm gonna to switch to cold rolled steel. So rather than paying 50 bucks for one piece of the fire pit, I'm getting all four for about 35 bucks. And the steel will actually weather nicely outside patina on it. Before I cut out the large pieces of cardboard, I'm going to tighten up my dimensions a little bit and transfer them to the computer. I'm also going to round up and round down a little bit to get this cleaner. Ah, six by four, how about that? So I think I got enough measurements on this to start transferring this to Illustrator and I should be able to interpolate what's on here to the other part. Beauty of this.
this design is that you can scale it to whatever uh, dimension of metal that you've got. The only variable here is that you need to make sure that the slits here and here are the width of the metal that you're using or just a little bit wider, just enough that there's a, a little bit of air in there so they slide together. I'm gonna make these plans available on my website. All right, now I'm gonna print this out at full scale and test it again with some larger pieces of cardboard just to make sure all the dimensions line up correctly. It's a perfect opportunity to reuse some paper already printed on one side. I'm gonna hit the back side of the paper with some spray adhesive and then tack the plans down to my larger pieces of cardboard. I'm gonna start with this top corner over here. All right, I've got one side glued up. Now I'm gonna do the other three. One thing I noticed is that when I was making the plans, my A side, uh, the outline is clear, it doesn't, it's transparent, so the, you can see the grid lines through it. But my B side, when I changed the color to gray to see how it looked uh, as a solid, I took away the transparency when I changed it back to white. So the uh, grid lines don't come through. It was so much easier to line it up having the grid lines there. So I'm definitely gonna fix that on the plans before I put them out on the website. I've got some double width cardboard and some single width cardboard, so kind of split the difference on how wide I cut these notches. Again, that's one adjustment you're gonna be making on the plans when you apply it to your metal, is you want to only cut these as wide as the metal itself, plus a little bit of air so that it slides together well. Now I'm going to assemble. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Although I think a 300% scale would work nicely also, perhaps with some thicker metal. I think the 11 gauge is a good size for this. We'll determine that for sure once we've got this cut out of the metal. I can find my scale here. Yeah, at 200%, this is about 12 inches tall by 18 inches across. And at a 300% scale, it would be 18 inches by 27. You could also hit the middle there at 250%, which would be a 15 inch tall by 22 and a half inch wide fire pit. There's only one thing left to do, cut it out of metal. One thing that the model has let me see is that I don't really like this uh, piece being unsupported here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this notch up a lot further. So I've got, rather than six inches of metal hanging there, I have more like two or three. But that'll also mean I need to probably put a, a supporting notch in down closer to the bottom as well. All right, so I'm gonna go back and adjust the plans. I'm gonna be cutting out of this 11 gauge cold rolled steel. 
and I'm just gonna test fit my parts here real quick to make sure that I've actually got enough metal for the scale that I'm outputting. All right, so my second piece is actually bigger than the first, so I've got plenty of metal. And I may try and get the scale to be exactly what my dimension is here. I've got a, a percentage point or two to increase. And the bigger piece is about a half an inch taller, so I will have to be making that cut there. But the more I can size exactly for this, height then the less cutting I have to do. The goal of this design also is to waste as little metal as possible. So as you can see there's just one small area of cut out here in the middle. This go round I'm taping it all into one piece before I use spray mount to adhere it to the metal. Now that it's all taped up and I'm happy with these lines, I'm going to check it with a measuring tape. And mainly I'm looking for these two lines being in parallel. Now that it's taped up and I'm happy with that, I'm going to cut it out. Now that I've got one piece taped together and I make sure everything's secure, do a light coating of spray mount on the back and then attach it to the metal. Just gonna use some all-purpose cleaner to get the cutting oil off the metal. A quick test fit to see how my pieces are gonna lay out. And you'll notice that I sized this exactly for the piece of metal that I had. I'm also only gonna use the spray adhesive on the places that I'm going to mark. So here, here, and then along these edges and that edge. I'm also gonna space the two sides right here so that a single kerf of the grinder will cut both of these edges. With some spray paint that's going to give me some contrast, I'm going to give a light coat on the edges to mark them. Before I pull off the paper, I'm going to mark the center of the air hole with a center punch. Now we grind. With this much grinding, I'm going to protect my ears, my eyes, and uh, my lungs by wearing a respirator. finish off the notches I'm going to drill the inside so I have a nice round profile that I can't get from the grinder. I'm going to do the same with the inside corners of the tab.
gives less than the width of the paint. This 11 gauge metal is the width of about two of the cutoff discs. So I'm actually gonna stack two discs in the grinder so I can cut the groove in one pass. Two pieces are roughed out. I'm gonna make two more identical pieces. One tip on the setup of my second piece of metal, which is taller than the last by about three quarters of an inch. The way I'm sticking the pieces on is to use the factory edge for the longest side or the top side. So I've got this staggered here. So I've got my long sides on this uh, nice edge here that I don't have to do extra finishing on. better to be safe than blind or deaf. Now that all my pieces are cut out with the shapes and grooves in place, I'm going to drill the air holes, uh, but just in two sides. I think I'm gonna try and just do the three air holes in two pieces versus all four, uh, just to start and see how that works for the prototype. So this beautiful old oil can belonged to my grandfather. In fact, this is the oil he put in it. I haven't used it enough to drain it yet. So what I will be doing though is adding some chainsaw bar oil, which does well under heat and helps lubricate a blade like this or a drill bit to help it stay sharp. So I'm gonna to switch to my uh, metal cutting hole saw bit, have a lot of oil on hand, and get to drilling those holes. Now that all the cuts and holes are completed, I'm gonna to switch to a grinding wheel and clean up all the pieces.
All right, all my pieces are cut and ground. Let's check the fit up. notch in obviously when all four sides are together it's gonna be a little snug but I think this notch were a little longer it would slide in to the space better but I really like how this looks I'm gonna make a few adjustments The rigidity of this. A few miscuts, but not bad for my first go at it. In the end, I lengthened that notch about half an inch. That just allowed it to engage and slide down. Now that the stove is cut and assembled, I'm going to move it outside. sheltered fire and the limited air access is really letting this thing build even though a lot of the wood was a little bit damp. Fire's working its way up. has taken me a little longer to produce than normal. In fact, it's had more outfit changes than a Super Bowl halftime show. I'm guessing you didn't miss this one. And that's probably because I wanted to have the plans ready when I introduced this video. And I'm also going to make this fire pit if you live in the US. And with US Postal Service flat rate shipping, I can include the shipping and the cost of the fire pit. In addition to the hot rolled steel, been saying cold rolled all along, it's actually hot rolled steel. I'm also gonna make this available in stainless, but as you remember early on in the video, you can see how much more stainless costs. So that'll figure into the price. Of course, I really want you to make this yourself. It's not a complex project. It does take a bit of time. And I think if I hadn't made the video and the plans, I probably could have created this project in about three to four hours. I'm really excited about how this particular metal is going to weather. It's gonna rust. Once the coating is burned off, it's gonna develop a nice patina. If you don't want a rust-colored fire pit, stainless might be an option for you. As much as I like burning the wood, I'm gonna do a propane conversion for this fire pit, and I'll do that in a future video. The card above is gonna link you to where you can pick up the plans, or order a fire pit. Thanks so much to my patrons for making these videos possible. And if you think I've earned it, please consider joining me over on Patreon for extra perks and community. 
As always, our mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green by doing it yourself. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and share and keep all the great comments. I really enjoy the feedback, ideas, and suggestions. Subscribe for a new Green Shorts DIY video almost every Friday.